Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on Fuji Bus Communication for Variable Speed Drives. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for investing your time with us today. My name is Aloysio João Correa, and I work as a sales engineer for low voltage drives. And I would like to introduce to you the webinar presenter, Diogo. Diogo is one of our sales engineers with more than 10 years of experience with automation products and solutions. Well, so before we move forward, I would like to share with you some instructions. To assure a good sound quality, all the microphone will be muted. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. So feel free to type it in in the questions and answer chat. Our team is going to reply to your question during the presentation. A recorded version of this webinar will be made available, so you can watch it again later. To do so, just access VAG LinkedIn page and click on events. There you will find this webinar, past webinar, and future ones from all the VAG divisions. Also, you can follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube, so you can receive the latest news about VAG, our products, and all the different solutions tailored for you. So again, welcome, and it's time now to pass it over to Diogo. Enjoy it. Hello, everyone. Thanks you. Thank you for joining this new webinar. Thank you, Aloysio, for a great introduction. Um, as you know, the today webinar is to talk about communication, especially about the communication protocols we have with the variable speed drives. And so we will share now um, the screen and we will start the presentation about field bus communication. Uh, once again, my name is Diogo Xavier Schmidt. And this webinar also uh, will be possible thanks to our Renan de Brito, Brito Lemi. Renan was also supporting this presentation. And by the way, Renan will present the same one tomorrow in the Spanish language. Before we start, let's show here a quick overview about the main topics. We will talk about variable speed drive with the different control and monitoring uh, possibilities and a quick introduction about the different communication networks. After that, we'll talk about the main physical layers used by these different communications and by all these communication protocols you can see here in the, in the video. Remembering that question are always welcome in the chat. Our team are here available to support you. So to start, it's important to understand how we can control a variable speed drive remotely. And probably you think about digital and analog signals because this is the easy way to control a variable speed drive. It is a simple logic and easy to set with the most of the variable speed drives. And also there is a possibility to use simple devices like push buttons, switches, and analog signals as well, considering, for example, a uh, potentiometer installed uh, close to the variable speed drives. And so with digital analog signals, we can also we, we can control the variable speed drive in an easy way, but we don't have access to all the parameter settings. And also we have several limitations if we have several variable speed drives installed in a cabinet or a machine or a process with several variable speed drives on it. Uh, in this case, we have the limitations that includes higher cost because there are several cables, digital and analog cables connected with each variable speed drive. There is a longer time to install and to make the commissioning of the system and also limitations concerning the terminals available in the variable speed drives. As you can see here, for example, the CFW300 WAG variable speed drive has only 12 terminals available. And when necessary to have a deep control and a deep monitoring, of course, the 12 different terminals will not be enough. And so to solve this kind of problem, there we can use communication networks and also call it field bus. But what, what means field bus? Field bus is a generic term to designate an industrial network connecting different devices. What, what is the idea and what are the main benefits of it? Firstly, concerning cost saving. 
if we have a single way to communicate, a single way to install a variable speed drive, uh, we can save money, cost with the installation, and also with the engineering time to set all the parameters. Communication network makes the system more flexible because we can install different devices by the same uh, communication network with a single network. And additionally, it is possible to integrate other devices that includes the PLCs, it means the programmable logic controllers, or other field devices like sensors uh, that will be connected in the same uh, communication network and also following an open communication protocol. This is very important because with the open communication protocol, there is a possibility to use devices from different manufacturers speaking the same language. Before we start with the different uh, communication protocols, it's important to understand two different things. What means a physical layer and what means a communication protocol? The physical layer is basically the means of transmitting the information from one device to another one. How this signal will be transmitted? By cables, which kind of signal will be used, and how can we install the cables with all these devices? And the most common physical layers used nowadays in the industry is the these following ones, the RS-232 and the RS-485. Additionally, with the CAN physical layer and with the Ethernet physical layer. So physical layer is basically the hardware of this installation. And what about the firmware? Firmware is basically the communication protocol. The communication protocol defines how the data is transmitted from one drive to another one, following some rules. Uh, and how uh, the communication uh, runs between those variable speed drives. And of course, other devices too. To start with the basic explanation about it, let me start with the RS-232. This is a serial interface. So basically, this interface uh, has two different terminals. One terminal is a transmitter and another one for receiver. So in this example here, we have a, a, a PLC connected with a variable speed drive. And so uh, when necessary to send an information from the PLC to the variable speed drive, this information, this data will be transmitted by the transmitter terminal to the receiver terminal of the variable speed drive. So that is basically the way that communication flows between two devices. And the variable speed drive will recognize this, this message from the master, from the PLC, uh, according to the voltage pulses that are transmitted by these cables. For example, a positive voltage is a bit one and a negative voltage is the bit zero. Okay. This RS-232 serial interface has, has some limitations. For example, there is a possibility only to connect two devices. It's a point-to-point -point communication and also with very short distance, no more than 30 meters, and also with very low speed data transmission. There are several other uh, uh, physical layers and a very used nowadays is the RS-485 serial interface. This one, different than uh, RS-232, allows multi-point uh, devices. It means several devices connected in the same network, as we can see here, for example, three variable speed drive. This is possible due to the shielded cables that are installed between these drives that protect against any noise or any other uh, uh, RFI or interference from the field. And due to the shielded cables, it's possible also to have long cables with a higher speed data transmission comparing with the previous previous physical layer. And how the drives or how the devices are connected with this communication network. So this is called a topology. This RS-485, for example, has a possibility to have a bus topology, also called daisy chain. What means? Means that information that comes from an external controller will flow in this 
communication network and it will be available for all the devices at the same time. It's not necessary to have a single cable connecting a PLC or a controller with each variable speed drive or each other device. You can see here in the presentation that uh, this serial interface needs some resistors installed in the network. The resistor must be installed in the both ends of the uh, of the communication network. Okay, and so if the PLC is installed in one side, and if there is a variable speed drive installed in another end, these two devices must have a resistor on it. And how can we install it? Uh, we need to have a it's necessary to have a, a resistor in our pocket, of course not. Okay, the, the devices and the communication modules already have a resistor uh, available as built in. We just need to switch the resistor on it. Okay, uh, WAG variable speed drives already have this, this switch is available. And so after we have an overview about these two, dif two different uh, physical layers, let's start now with the communication protocol and we start with the modibus. Uh, a quick overview about Modibus, it was developed in the 70s by a company called Modicon and currently it's an open protocol. It's, it's in fact a long time an open protocol and used worldwide by several companies and for several applications, especially with process control and automation. Uh, the Modibus protocol runs with three different physical layers. In fact, there are more, okay, but most common are the RS-232 and the RS-485. These two physical layers using the Modbus RTU communication protocol. And there is another one that use Ethernet physical layers that is called Modbus TCP IP. And to connect all the variable speed drives with this different uh, pro uh, communication protocols, it's necessary to check if the variable speed drive has the proper uh, communication module available. Some variable speed drives like the CFW500 already have the Modibus RTU port available as a standard. So how the Modbus RTU runs with the RS-232 physical layers? Remembering this one is limited with maximum two devices and using the transmitter and receiver uh, terminal. And so there are basically two different devices, the master device and the slave device. The master, de the master device is also in chair to start the communication using the Modbus. It means it will send a request to the slave the slave device will recognize this request from the master and will process it. And after that, it will generate a response. And so the slave device will always send a response back to the master uh, to conclude this communication, to conclude this request. It's, it happens, for example, if the master device wants to, to confirm, for example, the motor speed. So the master will send a request to check the motor speed and the slave will answer back with this information. The speed is 3000 RPM, for example. With the physical layer RS-485, it happens more or less in the same way with request and response. Okay, The master is, also in chair, is, is always in charge to start the communication with a request to the slave devices and the slave will send back the response. But different than previous uh, physical layer, here you can see there are more slaves. We can connect several slaves in the same network. And it's necessary to address which devices must follow the specific request. And so the request is basically formed by different fields or different parts. The first one define the slave address. The master device is capable to send a request for a specific slave. It's just necessary to add the proper ID address in this field. Or the master device can send a message to all the slaves at the same time. This is called broadcast communication. So if necessary, for example, to stop complete machine or complete process, 
the master can send a single message to all the slaves to stop everything, okay? Or if it's necessary to start or stop on a specific motor, the, uh, the master device is capable to send this request to a single variable speed drive. Another thing available here in this uh, data frame is the function code. This basically defines if this request is regarding to read information from the devices or to write, to send a comment to this device. Um, the request has also the data available. For example, if necessary to write an information in a variable speed drive or other devices, this data is available as a discrete uh, unit it means uh, basically a status, like a start stop. And this is called by Modbus as a coil. And also it's possible to send a numerical data, like uh, a speed, for example. And the speed is called, uh, this numerical data is called regi registers, okay? There is another specific field here for error checking. And we can see here with the response, how this error checking runs. Well. After the slave device received the request from the master, the slave will answer back or will send a response back to the master. For example, if the master asks the variable speed drive to change the motor speed, and so the variable speed drive will send a response to the master to confirm that motor speed was modified to 3000 RPM. So based on this confirmation in this response, the master confirms that the action was properly done. If there is any problem with this response or if the slave device does not recognize the request properly, the slave device will send an error code. In this case, the master device will recognize that the previous message or the previous request was not properly recognized by the slave. So, about communication speed, uh, the Modbus RTU must have all the devices speaking with the same uh, speed. It means uh, uh, the communication in all the devices must follow the same bound rate. That, that is the, the word used in, by Modbus to define the speed communication. And this speed communication uh, may change according to different factors. For example, the cable length between the devices, uh, the shielded cable type, because there are several cables and different qualities available in the market, okay, with different shields. And also uh, it may be limited by the number of devices installed in the same network. Typically the bound rates or the communication speed with the variable speed drive are set according to these speeds with the maximum uh, 38,000 bits per second. Before we move forward with another uh, communication protocol, uh, let me introduce another physical layer. And this is the Ethernet physical layer. So it was developed in the 70s by Xerox. Okay, This one in the beginning was not developed for industrial communication. Probably you know the Ethernet physical layer is very used with computers. And so it was developed firstly to communicate computers, but with the with more and more computers available in the industrial environment, we are now using also the same physical layer to connect industrial devices in different communication protocols. Benefit: Well, there are there is a higher speed communication compared with the previous serial communication. And also the Ethernet physical layer makes possible the connections with other different communication ways like wireless communication. It's, it's very common to use adapters in the field. Uh, Ethernet connected with different wireless communications like Wi-Fi wi or 5G communication. And Modbus is also available with this uh, Ethernet a physical layer. This one is called Modbus TCP IP. The Modbus TCP IP is based on the same idea considering request from the master and answer or response from the, from the slaves. But in this case, there is a, a different definition here concerning the master slave. Uh, 
uh, in the Ethernet physical layer, it is called clients that similar than the master and servers that are very similar than than slaves. There is a possibility to connect these devices in different ways. And if you want to connect more and more devices in the same network, it's necessary to use the Ethernet switches. The switches will increase the number of ports or the number of cables we can install and the number of devices that we can add in the network. Remembering that with the Ethernet physical layer, we don't have any more the IP or the address ID, but all the devices are identified by IP address. So it, there is a, a, another way to connect uh, the devices also with the Ethernet physical layers. Uh, instead of a daisy ch chain or a bus topology, as we spoke before, uh, here with the Ethernet, it's necessary to have different accessories or different modules to connect uh, Ethernet with more than one device. Uh, using a single port module, as you can see here in the picture, there is a possibility to connect variable speed drives or other devices in a start topology. In this start topology, there is a central point here is an Ethernet switch that will be connected, for example, with a PLC and all the variable speed drive and other devices. Um, it's possible to add more and more Ethernet switches here to increase the number of devices in this network. And there is a second possibility is to connect all the devices in the line topology or daisy chain. This one needs a, a, a drive with dual port module. Based on this dual port module, it is possible to connect the PLC in the first drive and after that connect all the variable speed drives like side by side connecting uh, one of connecting with another one. Next protocol is the Canopen. But before we to talk about Canopen protocol, it's important to understand what means CAN physical layer. This is a different layer, different than RS-485. Uh, the CAN is called Controlled Area Network, and it was developed by, by Bosch and Intel in the 18s. The idea in that time was to provide a low cost solution, especially for vehicles. But nowadays, and for several years, it's very used in industrial automation as well. There are several features, several benefits to use CAN instead of another ones that, for example, they can allow a multi-master control. It means there is no single master in the network, but more than one device is capable to start any communication. Uh, all the CAN data frames are available to all the CAN devices. It means it's not a single communication from one device to another one, but the, the data available in the network are available to all the devices. There is a possibility to set some data frames with high priority. It means the devices will always consider this one as a, as a first step, and after that to check another uh, known priorities communication. The physical layer can uh, has additionally the power supply available on it. And so instead of only can low and can high cables, this one's in charge to send the communication to different devices. The 24 volts plus and reference is also available. And this one is used by all the devices to feed the CAN interface. It means that CAN module is fed by the network and not by device itself. The CAN physical layer allows multi-point connection. It means several drives installed on it. And also it uses shielded cables that makes possible the connections with long cables and high speed data transmission. Uh, it is possible with CAN layer uh, physical layer to use it in a bus topology or the easy chain. And the same as the RSF485, it is necessary to have the, uh, the, the terminating resistors installed in the end of the line. So, can open protocol, which define the, the rules of the communications, okay, 
uh, has a limit of maximum 127 devices connected in this in this network and it has a, a several mechanisms that improves the communication between the devices in terms of speed in terms of how the devices will communicate with each other and the data frame used by can is called pdo or process data objects this is a data frame used by PD, by by can open to communicate from the master to the slaves or between the slaves as well there is a master device in charge of network management control and monitoring and additionally this kind of can open uh, communication requires a specific file that is available from the manufacturers of each device this is called configuration file this configuration file must be used to program the complete communication system okay and in case of can open this is called eds the electronic data sheet different than modibus can open has another uh, architecture called consumer and producer we will understand how now how it works okay if you remember well we have a master devices and we have also the slaves devices following the idea of the mud bus, mud bus communication but with can we have a different definition we have a producer and what means producer is the device in charge to start a communication or to send a request to another devices for example here the plc is in charge to produce a command to start or to stop and all the slaves devices connected to them to this master will be the consumer of this data so they are in charge to to confirm this information additionally all the slaves are also capable to produce the information and this information will be informed to the master device so the master device will be also consumer of this specific data but also other devices connected in the same network also will be the consumer of this information so different than modibus where we have the master that always start a communication with the can open all the devices are capable to start and to share the information of that devices to different ones so additionally here we can see another example uh, where you can see different devices connected to a can open that are reporting to the to the communication network different status for example first one are sharing the digital input status the another one is sharing the speed the motor speed and another one is sharing the analog input status and so that all the devices are capable to share with all the other devices uh, the status um, remembering that the plc also needs to have an external 24 volts power supply and this power supply must be sized to feed all the devices connected in the same network some plc's like the wag plc 300 already have a power supply available on it but some another ones must have an external power supply available concerning communication speed following the same idea of modibus communication all the devices must be set with the same speed it means the same bound rate and the same limitations are applicable here with can open it means that cable length cable type and number of devices installed in the same network may limit also the communication speed so if you have a network with so many devices probably the speed will be lower that is the reason the variable speed drive is capable to set several different speeds considering the highest one one megabits or the lowest one with 10 uh, kbits per second next one is device net well device net uses also the same can open physical layer and it was developed by alan bradley in the 90s currently this communication protocol is supported by odva the open device net vendor association 
It means all the devices that want to use this device nest protocol, uh, there is a possibility to follow all the recommendations from this organization, from this association. As I spoke, it is based on the CAN physical layer and protocol. And so it used the same idea concerning producer and consumers, but there are some differences. Device net is limited concerning speed, concerning the bound rate. There is a lower communication speed with device net compared with CAN. And, as, and also the maximum distance is limited with 500 meters. A good benefit of the ViceNet protocol is the network topology. With the ViceNet, it's possible to have trunk lines or drop lines with branching. What means? The device net has the same producer and consumer as I spoke before, but the topology to install and to connect to different devices are more flexible. Uh, can open, it's possible to have only the bus topology that is also called a daisy chain but here it is possible to have a tree topology with the tree topology it's possible to have different ramifications from the main communication line the trunk line it is possible to to add the drop lines to a single variable speed drive or other devices or to more than one making a kind of tree topology remembering that device net also needs the termination resistor in this case, a resistor with 121 ohms. Next one is Profibus protocol. This is a very used protocol that was developed in the 90s. Uh, and Profibus means process field bus. That is the definition of Profibus. As, as I spoke, it is very used nowadays, especially in the European countries. Uh, are, are the region that are more using Profibus. And it is very easy to install because it follows as well the RS485 physical layer. The same one we have with Modbus RTU. It is also based in a master slave type, but different than Modbus, it allows a multi-master device, a multi-master control. I will, I will talk more about it later. There are two main Profibus versions. The first one is Profibus DP, the decentralized peripherals. And another one is the Profibus PA, process automation. Most of the variable speed drives has the Profibus DP available, and this one we will focus in this presentation. Uh, to set the communication network, especially the master device, it's also necessary to have the different configuration files from different devices. These configuration files are called GSD or General Station Description. And this file will help the master devices to understand how many parameters and which parameters are available for that specific device. So Profibus DP, as I, as I, I told you, is a 485 serial communications based on that. And it's limited with maximum 125 devices and also use following their RS485 uh, physical layer, shielded cables with long distance and high speed. Um, different than Modibus, the, mod, the Profibus DP allows a tree and a start topology, connecting more devices with more flexibility in terms of uh, connections. And also it needs the same uh, resistor terminals that must be installed or connected in the end of the transmission line. Profibus allows to install more than one master device in the same communication network. As you can see here, there is a master device number one and a master device uh, number two connected to different slaves. You can see here that we have the same communication network, okay, and Master device number one is in charge, for example, to control the first slave. And the master device number two is in charge to control the slave number two and number three in this example. So it is possible to split the communication network in two different parts, and each master will be in charge to control these devices. Remember that master devices are also capable to communicate with each other. And 
the drivers will be in charge or will be capable to respond the request to the specific master device. But one interesting thing is about requests for monitoring. Okay, all the master devices connected in a Profbus network are able to send requests for monitoring. Does not matter if the slave is linked with one specific master or not. This makes more flexible the flow of the of the informations, the flow of the data between slaves and master device, making possible that answer or response from the slave number three will also be transmitted to the master number one. Concerning communication speed, here there is a difference comparing with, with the previous communication protocols. Uh, the Profibus master is responsible to set the communication speed of all the other devices. And so it's not necessary to set the speed reference in all the devices. Limitations are the same as another one, cable length, cable type, and number of devices, and the drive will recognize automatically what is the speed defined by the master and will follow it. Next one, PROFINET protocol. The PROFINET protocol is also, of course, based in the Ethernet physical layer, and it was introduced uh, now in 2000 in the year 2000. Different than Profibus, this is not based in the master slave configuration, but it is based on a producer and consumer. It means it's very similar than can open in, in terms of communication. There are specific connectors that are used in the field in the industrial environment to connect the drives and to connect with the, the PLCs and other or controllers. And typically these cables and all the identifications are green to make possible a easy identification of the PROFINET devices. One interesting thing concerning PROFINET, it allows in the same communication network to use other protocols. It means that that network will not be exclusive to use with PROFINET, but also making possible to connect computers or to connect other devices that will use different protocols in the same uh, Ethernet physical layer. And following other protocols, the, Ethernet, the PROFINET also uh, will need the GSD or the general station description to set the master devices. So in a quick overview about PROFINET, it is based on producer and consumer, remembering that all the devices are able to produce or to consume the data from the network. Um, there is a possibility to use Ethernet switches to increase the number of devices in this network. It's a standard switch. It's not necessary to have any special Ethernet switch for PROFINET. You can use a basic uh, switch available in the market. Number of, the, of devices. Basically, it is unlimited. Okay, it, it, it is possible to have add several devices in the same network. And considering also the shielded cables, it's possible to have long distance and high speed communication. Next one, EtherCAT protocol. The EtherCAT protocol was introduced in 2003, uh, and it is called EtherCAT based on Ethernet for Control Automation Technology. That, that is the basic definition. It was developed especially for motion control application. It means that kind of application that must have a very high speed communication because most of these applications must have a synchronous control, like a paper machine, for example, that must have all the motors running perfectly with the same speed or with the same positioning. And how to communicate these drives with so fast speed? EtherCAT is the best solution. It is based in a master slave uh, architecture and use also the RJ45 or the M12 connector that are very uh, uh, it's it's possible to find very, very easily in the market. And also concerning the Ethernet switches, this is possible to use a standard one. It's not necessary to have a special one. One interesting thing concerning uh, EtherCAT uh, communication modules is the availability of the two Ethernet ports or dual inter Ethernet ports with all the devices. And we will understand better why it's necessary to or dual port Ethernet. 
Following other protocols, it also, it also has a specific configuration file call, called ESI or external servicing interface. So how the com how ethercat communication is so so fast and so uh, used in the motion control basically the frame sent by master device is not sent to all the slaves at the same time or to all the slaves separately the same frame is transmitted from the master the, the master devices to the first slave available in the in the network this first slave will use part of the frame and will increase more information we will add more information in the same frame and the frame is transmitted to the next one it means it's not required to have always the communication between master and slave but a single frame will flow with all the devices available in the network making possible to have a very fast communication and you can see here that this is a kind of ring connection it means the frame will flow with all the devices and will be sent back to the master. There is a possibility as well to, add, to connect the ethercat by a, a single line connection or a line topology. In this case, the frame will flow as well. The same idea will connect the first the slave number one and after that to, to the next slave that we use part of this frame in its control and after that to do to the last device connected in the network. So when all the devices recognize the frame and send the answer back to the master, the frame is reported or is addressed back to the master device. So that is the idea behind ethercat and that is the reason that makes ethercat faster for motion control. Following uh, Ethernet uh, physical layer, uh, the installation uh, are basically the same of another Ethernet uh, physical layers. It means using Ethernet switches that increase the number of devices and makes possible to use very long cables with several uh, topologies. Another one, BACnet protocol. We spoke about several communication protocols, most of them use it in the industrial environment. And here is another one that's different. The BACnet protocol was not designed to industry. It was designed to building automation. Firstly, what means BACnet? It's a building automation and control networks that was developing in, in the 90s. It is based in the same RS-485 used by several water communication protocols. And considering this one is used for building automation with the variable speed drives, soft starters and other devices, it's very used with HVAC air application, especially with fans and pumps, okay? It follows the same master slave architecture, and there is also a possibility to have more than one master device. It is a multi master platform. And BACnet has three different types the BACnet IP, the BACnet Long Talk, and the BACnet MSTP or master slave token passing. This last one is the most used with the variable speed drive, and it is the version that is available in, in WAG variable speed drives too. What is the idea behind BACnet? Uh, we have several applications, and building wants to have a single controller, and this single controller is called an integrated building measurement system. And the idea with BACnet is to connect the variable speed drive and several other devices available in, in a building with this central controller. In the past, before we have BACnet protocol available, this kind of building and which kind of building? I'm not talking about single buildings only, but like a stadium, like shopping malls, like hospitals, okay? There is an auto automation in different areas each device was controlled in the past by different protocols. And due to the several different protocols, it was not easy to have a single one capable to connect 
all these protocols. And BACnet was developed to solve this kind of problem. And so with the BACnet, there is a possibility to have a single protocol. Does not matter if you have a fan, a pump, a, a firefighting system, or a security camera devices. All those devices will be connected and communicating with BACnet with this central controller. Following the RS485 physical layer, the BACnet is available or can be connected with the bus topology, making possible to connect all the devices in a single network. We spoke about several communication protocols. Uh, the idea here was to have an, an overview about different protocols. Of course, we can talk more and more deep and deep about each one, but the idea here is, is really to understand how the variable speed drive can be used and can be installed in this kind of network. And one thing that is necessary for th this different uh, um, communications, different protocol communications, is the um, configuration files. Okay. Several networks must have a file, and this file is available from the manufacturers and where to find it. The web variable speed drives with several different protocols uh, have all these files available in the website. So if you go to our website, the web.net, you can find in the product page, for example, here is a frequency inverter CFW11. It is possible to find the communication files in the download center. For example, here it's possible to find a, a EDS, the electronic data sheet of a device net communication, able to download and to make the upload in your communication network or master devices. Well, here in the end, uh, I did a, a comparison. This is a really overview comparison between all the communication protocols. Uh, and we can see here the, the main highlights of each one. Let me start with the Modbus. Comparing with the, another protocol, we can say that Modbus is the most simple, the simpler and easier to implement, and also with low cost compared with another ones. But of course, it has a limitation. It is not so fast like another one, especially when using the, the RS-485, a physical layer but it is enough or it's capable to have a process control and to have monitoring of, of different de different devices without any problem. What are the main highlights of Canopen? The Canopen compared with the other ones are more flexible, especially to add the communication between the devices. This is based on producer and consumer architecture. It was developed and very used nowadays for machine control but due to the flexibility is possible to use with several water applications. Okay, and it, it has also a limited speed, but good enough to have a machine control properly. DeviceNet follows also the same benefits of the can open communication, but it, it's more flexible concerning installation because there is a possibility to have more ramifications in the, in the connections, making possible to have a different topologies and making easier the connections with different sensors or other devices available in the field. Next one is Profibus, and let me share here the comments about Profibus and Profinet at the same time. This was an optimized uh, communication protocol to reach both high speed and low cost. It has an optimized high, high speed and low cost factor here. And due to this uh, optimization, it's very used for communication with different automation system. It's very flexible concerning different uh, uh, multi-master devices. It is possible to have this different communication between automation systems. Ethercat, as we spoke, is one of the, with the highest communication speed that, that makes possible to use, for example, with the motion control, the application that requires the most precise and fast communication between devices. And considering it is based on the Ethernet physical layer, we already have, of course, the high speed linked with that. And in the end, BACnet, this one not used in industrial environment, but used in building automation. So this is the best choice if you want to use a variable speed drive in a building automation, 
the best idea for sure is to use a backnet communication. Remembering that here we are showing different communication protocols, but how to select the proper communication protocol for your variable speed drive? The first question is to understand if there is an existing network. If there is an existing network with an existing PLC, of course, it's necessary to follow the current protocol. But if you are designing a new machine, a new process, it's possible to evaluate the different communication protocols and based on in these highlights to understand what is the best choice for your machine. So, gentlemen, that is all for the today webinar. As a last message here, you can see that uh, several WAG variable speed drives, soft starters, PLCs, so several devices uh, are available with different communication protocols. So if you need any help, how to size, how to select, how to control a machine with different communication protocols, please let us know. Our team are always available to support you, to support you from WAG headquarters or to support you with different WAG branches available worldwide.